Are vaccines really an important thing for those over 55 years of age for your health and longevity? Yes. And I'm not going to talk in this video about some of the, you know, the questions about vaccines and some of the anti-vaxxers. We're not going to cover that. We can do that another topic at another time if you want. We're going to talk about some of the uh, reasons why it's a really good idea if you want to protect your health, get vaccinated. And the first reason you want if you're over 55 is because there's a couple of things working against. I'm going to read a lot of notes here, so bear with me because there's too much data here not to just blow by. As we get older, we have decreased antibody function. So after 55, it starts to drop. We also have reduced T-cell function, which means it recognizes previous battles you've had with bacteria or viruses. That starts to drop. And the last thing is chronic inflammation is very common in people over 55, and that can really lead to more difficulty fighting infection. Here we go. I'm going to go through this list real quick. It's all on my blog. It's all on the website, and you really need to go there because there's references. There's also a chart that tells you which ones you need to get and what the dosage regimens are. I don't want to go through all that. It's right there. I'm going to talk about each individual one and why it's important. Influenza. Probably a serious threat to alert adults that they've kind of gotten away from really thinking about because of COVID. COVID was a respiratory virus. Influenza is a respiratory virus. Influenza has been around forever and it just keeps mutating. So that's why every year we have to change up the formulation. Higher hospitalization rates in people over 65. 50 to 7 percent of flu-related hospitalizations every year. 50 to 7 percent of their flu-related hospitalizations that they could have been taken care of if they got, you know, the vaccination. Increased mortality. So in this age group, they say 70 to 85 percent of flu-related deaths annually. So which means is uh, if somebody comes in with the flu, there's a high chance if they don't, if it's a severe case for that patient, that there, there could be mortality. Complications, many serious complications. Secondary pneumonia, after you get like a, a flu, you can get a bacterial infection. Myocarditis, encephalitis, awful. Next one, this is a vaccine that older people should get over, well, especially over 65, and that is pneumococcal or pneumonia vaccine. Very important. There are adults over 65 are three to five times the risk of a younger person of getting pneumonia, three to five times, so much, much higher chance of getting it. And um, unfortunately, we've done good with reducing the mortality from pneumonia, but it's still 20 to 60% depending on the patient depending on how severe it was, that's not good. There's long-term complications, cognitive decline and stuff, and they have a real serious case on pneumonia. It can be bad. Next one, shingles. This is a painful reactivation of the chicken box. This is nasty because uh, one out of three people in a lifetime are going to have a good chance of getting shingles, whether mild or severe case. Mild cases, you know, you get the rash, it follows your dorsal root across, and then you get it usually on your face or on your torso. This one is nasty, though. They're, they're vesicles that are very painful. But ophthalmic complications where you actually get shingles in your eye, that's a bad one. Lead to some loss of vision and some other serious eye problems. But here's the other thing too, you can just get post-hepatic neuralgia, which means you end up with a nerve pain after the shingles is gone. My wife had that. She got some up here, thank God it didn't hit her eye. But she said she couldn't put her makeup on her ear and color her hair. It was awful. It increases with age sharply after age 50, that's why you gotta get that, it's too serious. COVID-19, nothing at all, except now we're doing uh, the booster just about every year because the variant is changing, so we have to keep updating that. High mortality rates, we know that. It was a novel virus when it came out. It had, you know, a lot of uh, COVID deaths related with that. It was because it was a novel virus, and it was uh, red hot when it came out. They usually taper down with time, but that one came out with the gangbusters. Some of the complications are also long COVID. For people that have COVID infections, they can end up with some persistent fatigue, cognitive disease, cognitive issues, I'm sorry, and even organ damage. Not good. RSV. Okay, that's the respiratory sick field virus, RSV. Now, this is a vaccine relatively new that's been coming out because deaths from RSV were 10,000 deaths a year annually and 160,000 hospitalizations among people 65 and older. Not good. So we're able to beat that. Because the FSV rate is extremely high with this vaccine, 82 to 94 percent in the first season after getting vaccinated. Very good. There's a shared decision making there about who gets it, but people over 60 with complications can, but everybody over 75 should get it. All right, now I'm going to round this up and say on the uh, website, on my blog, you can go in there and look at all the different regimens as far as for these vaccines. Uh, they're very important that you get. I think I forgot one. DPT? Yeah, I did. I forgot one, didn't I? Yeah, I forgot to talk about uh, Tdap. Tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Usually seniors that have grandchildren should get that. Very important. That's usually every 10 years. So I hope that helps. And here's my recommendation. I've given thousands of shots in a lifetime as an immunizing pharmacist. We've had a couple ADRs, adverse drug reactions from the vaccine but few and far between. So the benefits way out, you know, the benefits will far outweigh the risks, complications. So how do you recommend it? Again, come to the 
to the blog and read about to the different regimens, but also I'm gonna highly recommend you do it because it could be that the difference between you being sick for no real good reason, because you could have avoided it, or God forbid, much worse with some of these complications from these diseases. These viral and bacteria prevention can be done with vaccines. So hope that information helps. God bless.